Hello and welcome to my narrated FPV flight. This video contains an overview of my FPV setup followed by a flight to test its range. Here is my beautiful assistant holding the aircraft which is a Skywalker 1900. For the video I am using a 1.2GHz. My video transmitter is a Lawmate 500mW. The antenna is a Mad Mushroom. At the front is my FPV camera and GoPro mounted on a ready-made RC pan and tilt device. For the control of the aircraft, I'm using a Dragonlink UHF system, which operates on 433 MHz. The antenna is a dipole and is mounted in the tail. The autopilot and OSD is Cyclops Tornado. The GPS for this is mounted on the boom just behind the propeller. On board, I also have the Telefly Pro OSD. This is wired in series with the Tornado and is there purely just to feed the coordinates back down to the ground station for the tracker. Transmitter is a Tyrannus and it has the Dragonlink module on the back and the diamond antenna attached. The goggles are Fat Shark Attitude V2 with a big nose skew antenna. My ground station is tripod based. Firstly it has a 4 way video splitter and a DVR recorder. Next we have a cheap 7 inch eBay monitor. Attached to the back of that is a 5.8 GHz video transmitter. This acts as a relay to send the video signal to my goggles wirelessly. At the top of the ground station here we have the MyFly Dream antenna tracker, the Lawmate 1.2 GHz video receiver and the 1.2 GHz VAS crosshair. So I'm using 1.2 GHz to transmit from the plane to the ground station and then 5.8 GHz to transmit from the ground station to my goggles. The crosshair is my video receiver antenna. This antenna is directional. The advantage of a directional antenna is that it gives you a longer range. The disadvantage however is that you have to point it at the airplane. This is why I have it mounted to the tracker. The tracker will ensure the antenna is pointed at the plane the entire flight. I have placed my iPhone on the antenna to record a video of the plane while it circles me above. This is the video recorded by the iPhone. As you can see it's quite accurate in tracking the plane in the sky. Apart from the pre-flight checks before takeoff, there's quite a few things I need to do. I need to start the GoPro recording, I need to start the DVR recording the live feed, I need to start the Cyclops Tornado recording the GPS coordinates, I need to set the home location on the autopilot, and I need to set the home location for the tracker. For the takeoff, I'll launch it and fly line of sight. Once I've gained a little bit of altitude, then I'll switch to my goals to fly FPV. As you can see, I'm just switching to my goggles right now. Here is the takeoff again in FPV. The main view you can see here is the GoPro's HD onboard recording. In the top left corner is the live flight feed, which is exactly what I was seeing in my goggles during the flight. I've just finished testing the return to home function of the autopilot. Now that I'm happy this is working correctly, I'm going to head on my outward journey. My plan is to head in a northeasterly direction and keep going just to test the range of my equipment. I've come out to the middle of the countryside to have a safe environment for this flight. 99% of this flight will just be covering fields. It wasn't really the best day to be testing the range of my equipment as the cloud was quite low and the visibility wasn't great but I decided to give it a go anyway. I'm currently flying in an automated flight mode called Pilot Assist. This is designed to lock my heading and altitude and is indicated by the PA at the bottom of the OSD. My altitude is displayed in meters on the middle right of the OSD. My distance from home is also shown in meters as in the bottom middle of the OSD. Here I am using the pan and tilt device just to take in the views while I'm cruising along. At 
this point I was just reaching 5 kilometers from home and my video feed wasn't quite perfect so I decided to increase my altitude slightly. My airspeed is shown in kilometres per hour on the middle left of the OSD and my ground speed is also shown in kilometres per hour in the bottom right corner. Because my airspeed is quicker than my ground speed I know that I'm travelling against the wind. In long range FPV it is safer to go against the wind on your outward journey, minimising the risk of getting stuck with not enough battery to get you home. In the bottom left corner of my OSD, it shows how many milliamps I've used of my battery on board. I'm currently carrying 10,000 milliamps, which means I can use 8,000 milliamps before I need to land. So far, I've only used 2,700. As I cross the 10 kilometer mark, you'll notice that the autopilot goes into return to home by itself. This is because I haven't changed the safe operating range of pilot assist. From this point I need to fly manually. At this point the video feed wasn't great, which is quite disappointing because I've been to 10 kilometers a few times and it's been crystal clear. My guess is it's down to the fact that the weather is a lot worse today than it has been on previous flights. At this point I noticed the visibility was getting slightly worse. When looking back at the HD footage it's quite clear I was actually flying through the clouds. At this point during the flight the video feed was really starting to get quite bad. I was just slowly changing my course and trying to get my picture back. In the top left corner of the screen you can see my RSSI figure. This is the signal strength indicator for my Dragonlink UHF connection. The number is from 0 to 100, with 0 being no link and 100 being a perfect link. Here you can see I'm quite clearly flying through the clouds again. I'm pretty sure this can't be great for my range test. The control link still seems to be doing okay. I'm not really worried about losing the control link because in the event that the signal is lost completely, the failsafe is programmed to activate return to home. At this point the video feed was breaking up enough for the flight to become less enjoyable and more stressful. So I decided that 15 kilometers would be the point on which I'd turn around and come home. During the flight home, I'll take this time to mention that this plane is powered by two 4-cell 5000 milliamp batteries wired together in parallel. It's using a 60 amp speed controller and has a 9x6 APC prop. I'm just about to arrive back at the field that I took off from. As you can see, I only used 5700 milliamps for the entire journey. In the top left you can see that my total trip distance was 33 kilometers. I know from previous testing that this Skywalker is capable of at least a 50 kilometer flight, so plenty more left in the battery. Towards the end I came in for a couple of lowish passes, much to the excitement of the local kids. I think it was at this point they realised I wasn't just a weirdo stood in the middle of a field with some goggles on.
So here I am coming into land. The field isn't great, it's quite rough, but it seems to go okay. This is my flight path shown on Google Earth. This file was created automatically by the Tornado Autopilot. If you have any questions, please just drop a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the video or found it useful or interesting. If you did, please let me know by clicking the like button below. For more videos like this one, please click subscribe. Thank you.